Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. And welcome to one of the very first looks at Valorant. This past weekend, thanks to the awesome guys over at Riot, myself and the rest of the Arix gaming team had a chance to go hands-on with the game for a good few days, dive in, test out the characters, test out the mechanics, and record a ton of gameplay for you guys. And today, I want to bring you the first of that. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at all the different characters. There are currently nine playable characters, all with their own unique abilities and playstyles. So in this video, I want to give you guys a chance to see those abilities in action, get a little understanding as to how they work, what they can do, some of the cool tricks and tips around them. And then of course, over the weekend, we'll be releasing some gameplay and plenty of other videos showing you loads of different aspects of the game so that when the beta drops next week, assuming you guys get a chance to jump in, you'll already know what you have ahead of you. So, if you guys do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. If you're excited for Valorant, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, make sure you stick around, turn on those notifications, because we've got a ton of videos coming your way. So if you don't want to miss them, then this is definitely where you want to be. But let's start by talking about the characters. Characters in Valorant, largely speaking, fall within four different archetypes. You have Duelist, Sentinel, Initiator, and Controller. And I'll speak more in depth about the actual archetypes themselves in a later video. But for the time being, let's focus on just the characters and their abilities. Now it's worth noting, every single character, no matter who you choose, has four different abilities. The first two, typically mapped to C and Q, are optional abilities that you will purchase at the beginning of a round, much like you purchase weapons, much like you purchase armor. So of course you'll naturally choose these depending on either your playstyle or the encounter you're about to go into. Meanwhile, your third ability on E cannot be purchased. This instead is active at the beginning of every single round. This is to a degree one of your signature abilities. And upon using this, they then operate around one of two different cooldown methods. Some characters will have them cooldown simply over time. Meanwhile, other characters will have them cooldown based on kills. So for example, if you're one of those characters and you then get two kills in a round, you are then able to use that ability again. However, if you don't get that, then at the start of the next round, it is refreshed and ready to go. And then your final ability for every character is effectively your ultimate. This one will charge up as you get kills throughout the rounds. You can also collect orbs to basically give you a charge to get you there quicker. And then this is typically one of your most decisive moves that can often, you know, shape the way the battle turns out. So starting off with Brimstone, the uh, bearded champion. Yes, I'm a little bit biased. I'm going to start with the guy with the beard, all right? But anyway, your two optional abilities. The first one is Stim Beacon. With this, you toss down a beacon, and then when you're standing inside the beacon and you get the buff, you then get an increase to your fire rate. You get rapid fire, and obviously, you know, the faster you can fire your bullets, technically speaking, provided you can land, the more damage you can do. It is worth noting, this is a field that is active to anybody that stands in it, so the enemy can still benefit from it, so if you're on the opposing team and you stand in it, you can also benefit from this. Additionally, your second ability is Incendiary. This allows you to equip a grenade launcher, and you can then fire this. It fires off in a little volley in a kind of typical grenade launcher trajectory. This will bounce before it detonates, so it doesn't detonate as soon as it lands. It bounces for a bit, rolls, and then of course it blows up there. On doing so, it then creates this large lingering burning zone, and of course it damages anyone within the zone. It is worth noting that it can also damage your teammates, admittedly at a lesser rate, but this is a way to lock off a zone or deal damage to enemies that are stuck in a particular area. Area. You then have your E, which is your Sky Smoke, and this is a really good ability for locking down and controlling sight lines. This basically brings up a map, and you then have the opportunity to mark where you want the smokes to drop, and upon dropping them, they will then create these lingering spheres, the lingering domes, that will obscure vision. Now it's worth noting, you can either drop down one, or you can drop down multiple at the same time, so if you happen to be on a point and you want to lock off multiple doorways, you can do this. And then as for your ultimate, you have Orbital Strike. With this one, you basically select a location on the map and this huge laser-like Orbital Strike comes down, raining damage on the area. It is worth noting that it does have a visual kind of indicator to begin with. If you see this straight away and you're stuck in the very epicenter, you do have just about enough time to run out and take just a tiny bit of damage. But generally speaking, if you're caught in the center of this, it will kill you pretty quickly. Next up on the list, we have Jet, a really cool character for those kind of people that like their sort of fast, active playstyle that want to kind of get in there, do a lot of damage, get out quickly, that sort of thing. Jet has Cloudburst as her first ability, her C. With this, it allows her to throw a projectile that will basically create a vision blocking cloud. And this one, of course, creates a cloud at the location that you fire the projectile. So you can use this to obviously throw it down on the ground, block off a corridor. But if you throw it up high, you can also curve it to throw it to say windows or elevated positions to block off vision from someone that say maybe standing up higher trying to get a sniper vantage. 
Additionally, your Q ability allows you to propel yourself up into the air. You can use this to float up to get onto, say, boxes that other characters may not be able to climb onto, thus giving you a aerial advantage over the battlefield. Additionally, you can also float from these positions. So if you wanted to, say, jump up onto a box and then float around a corner to maybe surprise an opponent who might not be thinking about looking in that particular direction, that is a great thing to do. Your E ability is Tailwind. With this one, you can dash in the direction that you're moving. So you can use this to dash towards enemies, away from them, and also side to side. Really, really good at, of course, mixing people up, getting them confused. If you kind of dash towards someone and they don't necessarily have their crosshair on you, it can, of course, be a good way to get them very quickly. And then finally, you have Blade Storm. With this, you equip a set of highly accurate throw knives that recharge on killing an opponent. So typically, you have five to throw. If you get the kill, they recharge. And you can either press your regular fire button to throw out a single knife, or alternatively, you have what is effectively a shotgun fire. You can use your alternate fire mode to throw all the remaining daggers at your target. Does a lot of good damage, very precise. And of course, you can then use this to dash around quickly. You can basically have these active, move around the battlefield with them, combine them with things like Tailwind and Updraft to really just dart around. Around the enemy. Next up, one of my favourite characters, partly because he has a London accent, which is incredibly cool seeing that in this game. Absolutely love it. You have Phoenix. His first move is Blaze. This allows you to create a flame wall. And again, a lot of things in Valorant, keep in mind, are largely speaking things to obscure vision. This does do damage, however. It's worth noting that while this puts up a wall that stops you from seeing through it, you can also damage enemies if they are stuck inside it. It's also worth noting that if you hold down the fire button whilst you're casting this, you can actually bend the wall in the direction of your crosshair. So while, you know, typically you may create a straight wall just to block off a corridor, you can use this to, say, you know, curve around a point to provide some additional vision blocking for your team. Additionally, you have Curveball, which is basically your flash. With this, you throw an orb either left or right. When you initiate the move, you'll basically have the option to press either your fire mode or your alternate fire mode, whether you want it to curve left or curve right. So you can use this to curve it around corners. When it detonates, it creates a blinding flash. It's worth noting, if this is cast in front of you, it'll also blind you, it'll also blind your teammates. So you want to be careful with this and ensure you are actually throwing it around the corner so you don't, you know, hinder your team but you can also use this and you know combine it with your crosshair angle to get some interesting things you can kind of throw it up into windows throw it around corners it's a really good move provided you can master the trajectory you then have your ability hot hands with this you equip a fireball and you throw this and it explodes after a set amount of time and upon hitting the ground it again creates a lingering fire zone that damages enemies it's worth noting phoenix has a really interesting passive whereby if he stands in his own fire either from hot hands or from the blaze wall you can actually heal so you know you want to use that to your advantage because in situations where you're low on health throwing hot hands onto the ground and standing in it is a way to get some health back Finally, you have your ultimate, which is run it back. Incredibly good. For this one, you place a marker on the ground. You then run forward into battle. You can be a little bit kind of crazy with this one because if you die or the timer runs out, you will then teleport back to the location you started and you can then go from there. So it's kind of like a free life. You can basically use it to rush a point, be a little bit dangerous because upon that kill, you can then go back, share that intel with your team and move forward. Next up on the list, we have Sage. Sage's first ability is Barrier Orb. With this, you're able to cast and place a solid wall this time. So a lot of the walls you've seen up until this point have been vision blocking, but people can walk through them. This is a solid ice wall. You can stand on it. You can cast it below your feet so that you can actually stand up higher. And of course, you can use it to lock off areas. But given the physical nature, it genuinely does actually stop people from getting through. Keep in mind, you can shoot the wall to destroy it. Similarly, if you're on Sage's team, you can also shoot it if it happens to have you know, been placed in an inconvenient place. And you can use your alternate fire to rotate the wall so you can position it in different clever angles to lock off different areas. You then have Slow Orb, which is an incredibly good, potent move. This one, you throw this orb and when it lands down on the ground, it creates this sort of icicle area and anyone that's caught inside is heavily slowed down. So if you throw this on someone that is trying to flee, throw this on someone that's trying to make a move around the corner and they move incredibly slowly, it's basically a free shot because it puts them in a very difficult position. Your E ability is then a healing orb. With this, you can either fire this at a damaged ally to then heal them over time. And the heal on this is actually, while it's not instant, it is actually quite sizable. It will heal the majority of your health. There seems to be a little bit of discrepancy when we kind of tested this. It seems to not always heal like a flat value. Sometimes it healed us almost max. Sometimes it was a little bit below, but generally speaking, you're looking at a good sort of three quarters chunk of your health. So it is a sizable heal. Alternatively, if you happen to be in danger yourself, you can use your alternate fire mode to cast it on yourself. As for your ultimate ability, this one is Resurrection. For this, you can simply pick a teammate that happens to have died that round and you can then resurrect them. It is, however, worth noting that the Resurrection animation does leave your ally a little bit vulnerable, so you don't just want to cast it and forget. If they happen to be in the middle of a corridor and you just 
res them and run away, they can definitely be killed before they're actually able to regain control of the character. So you kind of need to cast it, defend them for a bit so they can then get back in the action before you move on. Moving on from there, we then have Sova, one of the characters that I can see a lot of people gravitating towards. He's definitely going to be one of those key team picks, purely from a kind of sort of match intel point of view. First up, you have Owl Drone. This equips a drone that you can then fly around corners. You can fly this around, you know, for a limited period of time, and you can use this to get visibility without having to actually expose yourself. If you see someone, you can actually shoot a marking dart at them, and this dart will then reveal the location of any of the players that you struck. Of course, the drone itself can be destroyed, so if someone sees it coming around the corner and they shoot it, then it's gone, but this is very good to get into. You then have Shock Bolt, which you fire from your bow to deal damage upon collision. Obviously, if you hit an enemy at the center of the collision, it does the most damage. But if enemies are caught in the kind of wider explosive radius of it, they will still take some damage, albeit less than at the epicenter. It's also worth noting that anything that uses your bow, whether it be Shock Bolt or Recon Bolt, you can also use your alternate fire mode to enable bounces. So by default, the arrow will just be something you can charge and you can of course fire it at your target location. The longer you charge it, the further it goes. Meanwhile, if you use the alternate fire mode, you can enable bounces up to two times. So you can also use it to bounce it down a corridor to then hit your targets. Alternatively, you have Recon Bolt, one of the most potent moves for this character. This fires a tracking dart, tracking arrow, that will then reveal players' locations within a radius. So again, pair that with the fact that you're able to bounce the arrow off walls, you can then fire this down corridors and you can get intel on enemies making kind of a push up a corridor without actually having to expose yourself. It is also worth noting you can, technically speaking, fire this tracking dart into an enemy, and then if they ran with it, they would basically be revealing their team. It's also worth noting that this can actually be blocked by line of sight. So if your arrow goes out and it reveals someone's location, but they then put themselves behind a box, they can actually avoid the tracking. And then finally, you have Hunter's Fury, which is your ultimate. With this, you have three shots, which are basically wall piercing blasts. You can fire your arrows through walls, and you can use this to hit targets. It's also worth noting if you happen to hit a target that you didn't know was there, they will also be marked for a short period of time, so it can also be used to reveal enemy locations, but typically you would pair this with your recon bolt, find where someone is, and fire through the wall. Keep in mind, while you have freedom of movement whilst you're initially aiming, the second you begin charging the shot, the second you kind of draw the string, you then have massively reduced mobility, so you can't move this completely freely. Once you started aiming, once you started drawing the bow, then of course you have to kind of commit to your location. But you do have three shots when you activate. After that, we then have Breach, who has a number of kind of interesting moves that uh, can basically go through walls. First up, you have Aftershock. With this, you equip a fusion charge and you fire this charge to set a slow acting burst through a wall. And this burst does heavy damage to anybody caught in the area. Again, incredibly useful. And if you happen to know if someone is camping around a corner, being able to charge this up, admittedly, it's a little bit slow to charge, but once you've got it active and you're going, you can then fire this through the wall to deal damage. Alternatively, you have Flashpoint, which allows you to equip a blinding charge. This too can be fired through walls, and instead upon detonating, it will then blind all players that are looking at that. So again, you know someone's around a corner, fire this through the wall, blind them, rush around the corner, and hopefully you can get the drop on them. Your E ability is then Fault Line. This equips a seismic blast. You can hold down fire to increase the distance, and you can release it to set off the quake. In doing this and getting hit by this, it will daze all players in its zone and in a line up to that zone. So basically, imagine it like a you know a genuine fault line that from breach all the way to the kind of endpoint destination, everything in front of that is effectively a hit zone. And then finally, for your ultimate, you have Rolling Thunder. With this one, you equip a seismic charge and you then send a cascading quake through all terrain in a large cone. And this will then daze enemies and knock them up in the air. Keep in mind, this isn't actually a damaging ult. This is purely kind of more so like a debuff and knockback one. So you want to sort of pair this with your team. If you use this and cast this again through a wall and you daze people and knock them up and your team then flank around the corner, you would then have the advantage to try and take them out. But you're not going to be using this to kill anyone specifically with that move. Next up, one of my favorite characters, and probably one that I played the most because I just really like his playstyle. you have Cypher. Cypher, kind of like a little sort of spy. He's got Trapwire, which is an ability that you can then throw between two parts of the environment. It can't be like a huge distance, but you basically create this Trapwire, this invisible beam that the enemy cannot normally see. If they walk up to it slowly, it will then reveal itself, and at which point they can then shoot it on the wall and destroy it. But if they're moving quite fast and you've placed it, say, at foot level and they're not necessarily looking, then they'll get caught in this. Upon getting caught in it, it will then slow them down, but it will also reveal their location. So if you happen to be around the corner, you can then see them and you can then basically duck around the 
corner, shoot them before they're able to get out of the trap. It's also worth noting you can actually go and pick this back up and redeploy it. So if you happen to put it in a place and you know the team just aren't coming, maybe they're pushing a different point, you can use this elsewhere. Alternatively, you have Cyber Cage. With this one, you throw down this beacon on the floor, which you can then activate to create this cylindrical cage that basically blocks off area. Again, it's largely speaking designed to obscure vision. However, if someone walks through it, it slows them down ever so slightly, and it also makes a very noticeable audio cue. So you can basically hear if someone's about to be pushing through it. It's a really good way to, again, just kind of lock down an area, block their vision, and just know if they're coming through. After that, you then have spy cam, one of your most useful moves. With this one, you throw a camera on the wall, which is initially invisible, and you can then activate it and jump into the camera to use it to basically look around corners. Now, this is really cool because when you are in the camera, you can then fire a dart into an enemy, which will then reveal their location. It's worth noting that for Cypher, the location isn't quite in real time. It'll give you the location as like a flash of where that player was standing a moment ago. So if they were moving, you'll get a kind of loose idea as to roughly where they are, but it's not gonna be a one-for-one -one tracker. It's also very important to note that the second you activate your camera and you go into it visually, it then reveals its location and people can see it and someone can shoot it. But then when you exit it, after a second or so, it will go invisible again. So once you place it, it's safe. But once you go into it, you need to be mindful that people can shoot it and they will shoot it. And then finally, for your ultimate, you have Neural Theft. With this one, if you have recently killed an opponent, there'll be a little sort of timer above their body. You can then throw your hat onto them and it will then reveal the location of the entire team on the map. Again, much like the spy cam, it'll give you a snapshot for that moment in time for about three or four seconds, it will basically mark their icons on the map so you can see where they are. But then of course, once that's gone, the intel is over. So it won't be real time tracking, but if you are trying to find someone or you wanna know if you can make a push and you can quickly do that, it can of course influence what your team will be doing. Next up, we have Omen, who is an incredibly cool looking character. His first ability is Shrouded Step. With this one, you equip the Shadow Walk ability and you then see this range indicator on screen. You can then adapt this and move it further away from you or closer. And upon pressing the fire button, you will then teleport to the marked location. You can also use this to teleport to higher up areas on top of boxes, again, to get a pretty good vantage point. Moving on from there, you then have Paranoia. This is effectively a blinding ability. With this one, you can fire a projectile in front of you, and this will briefly reduce the vision of the opponent, assuming it collides with them. It's worth noting this projectile can go straight through walls, but it does also travel quite slowly, so depending on the way your opponent is moving, they can, of course, dodge it. However, the fact that it can pass through walls means you can use it to catch them off guard, and if you're on the receiving end, it looks a little something like this. It basically obscures your vision for a short period of time, so it is effectively another blind. Meanwhile, your E ability is Dark Cover. For this one, you equip a Shadow Orb and you'll then begin by seeing a range indicator. You can effectively push this further forward or further backward, depending on, of course, how you toggle it. And this will then launch a large shadowy orb that is effectively another one of those vision blocking abilities, a big dark orb. Now this one can actually be cast higher up as well. So you can actually launch this to begin with up in the air and it will then slowly descend down to the ground. This is obviously quite useful because it means you don't just have to block off things like corridors. You can also block off, say, a window that someone will be sniping through. And then of course it will slowly drop down, potentially covering your descent or covering, say, a teammate who wants to jump out of one of those windows. A very good move and again, a great way at holding down a point. And then finally, you have From the Shadows, which is your ultimate ability. And this is basically a map-wide teleport. You can teleport to literally anywhere on the map. So if you are, say, at point B and the enemy's pushing point A, you can teleport all the way over to them, you can teleport behind them, and then get the drop on them. It is, however, very important to note that upon initiating the teleport, if you're on the receiving end, your map will basically do this weird shadowy thing. So you'll then be very aware that an omen is teleporting somewhere in your vicinity. It's also worth noting that there are kind of two important stances. If you see omen teleporting in this weird, not fully formed shadowy figure and you shoot it, it will cancel his teleport and he basically won't come to your location. However, if you want to be a little bit more tactical and you wait, you can wait till he starts to fully form his shape and you can then kill him just before he's able to draw his weapon. You can, technically speaking, based on timing, if you hold down a direction as Omen, when you teleport in, chances are you may be able to sidestep just before you get shot in the head, but that window does leave you pretty vulnerable. So ideally, you want to place yourself in a place that people are not necessarily going to look when you're teleporting. And then finally, we have Viper. 
Viper's first ability, Snake Bite, basically equips a chemical launcher. You then fire this canister, and upon hitting the ground, it will then create this lingering chemical zone that damages and slows enemies. Again, it will only do 33% damage to them, so it is a lesser damage, but it is still something that can affect your teammates. But largely speaking, this locks off an area. If enemies are caught in them, it will kill them pretty quickly. Alternatively, you have Poison Cloud. With this one, you equip a gas emitter. You can throw this down and you then have the ability to activate this whenever you want. So you'll have this UI prompt and you can basically press the button to enable the poison cloud. It's worth noting Viper has a poison fuel. You'll see that in the middle and using these abilities, having them active will basically drain from this fuel. So you'll then need to disable it for that fuel to refill. The poison cloud is basically a spherical area that again, you can use to block off a corridor. Again, it's one of those vision blocking things. And while if enemies do stand inside it, they will take damage. It will never kill them. It will only ever take them down to basically one HP. So see this much less for the damage and more so for the vision blocking abilities. You can also go over and pick this back up if you want to replace it. So keep that in mind as well. Your E ability is Toxic Screen, and this is incredibly potent. With this, you'll basically fire out this long line of like sort of nano drones effectively, and they lay themselves down on the ground. And then again, upon activating it, it creates this huge gas wall that similarly will do a little bit of damage, won't kill your enemies, but is largely speaking used to lock off areas. Now, what's really interesting about this is that while it doesn't go through walls, it does have a trajectory. So if you shoot it up high, you can shoot it over buildings, and you can actually look at the minimap to see the distance at which this will cast. So you can basically use that to plot your line, plot where you want this thing to go. And you can throw this over buildings and over say points. So this can be really good at effectively controlling and locking off visibility for a large portion of the map. Keep in mind, this also draws from Viper's fuel pool. So if you happen to have poison cloud and toxic tree at the same time, and they're both active, they're gonna drain that fuel pretty quickly. And then finally, you have Viper's Pit, your ultimate, which with this one, you basically equip a chemical sprayer. You create this large sphere around you, and it basically locks down a large area, obscuring vision for everybody inside. Now, it's also worth noting that all while you remain inside this, this will not go away. So you can stay inside this indefinitely, and it will remain active the whole time. If you step outside, you'll see the meter, that begins to deplete. If you're out for too long, this will end. However, if you step back in, it refreshes. So basically, you wanna cast this and remain inside it, and you can then see your targets. It's also worth noting that as Viper, if you happen to be moving around your cloud and you see the enemies, they will be very visibly lit up in this bright red glow. They too can see you from basically the same distance, but because you have that massive obvious glow, it makes it very easy to spot someone in a cloud. So use that to your advantage, lock off an area, lock off a point, work through, kill them, and you're good to go. So that, my friends, is a quick look at all the characters so far in Valorant and their abilities. Be sure to keep it locked. We've got plenty more videos coming your way. We've already got some gameplay up if you guys want to see a complete match. And matches in Valorant are pretty long. They go on for quite some time. Typically, unless it's like massively one-sided, they're around 24 rounds. So uh, there's lots and lots of cool stuff to look forward to. So check out the gameplay. There's some already on the channel and there'll be some more going up a little bit later on today. And we've got plenty more videos planned for the weekend. So if you guys are excited for Valorant, stick around, keep it locked. And of course, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think so so far. Thanks for watching, watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.